Hello and welcome back to BME 2315. Today we're going to be talking about optimization. So optimization is a critical aspect of the engineering design process. In uh, ENGR, in your initial class, you I'm sure you already talked about some of the basic steps of optimization or uh, engineering design in terms of identifying a problem, identifying criteria and constraints, brainstorming, generating ideas, and then selecting an approach and building it, and then uh, testing whether or not your design was successful. However, there's an eighth part of this, which is re re refine the design. Uh, that means to keep try giving it another try and, and learning from the mistakes of the past. Um, that is just as critical in engineering design. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. How can we have mathematical methods that help us refine a process so that it gets better and better over time. As the biological um, motivation, um, we're going to be looking at uh, acetaminophen overexposure or overdosing. Um, and this is a basically a problem with all drugs, but has been particularly prominent um, looking at for acetaminophen because in addition to having its main uh, beneficial effects at reducing headaches or reducing pain, there are toxic byproducts of acetaminophen that um, can cause um, a, a, a lot of different problems. And um, it's because of this that there's a, both a good and a bad aspect to these drugs. And so we need to be able to find a ways to maximize the good while minimizing the bad. To give you an idea of what that might look like in a little bit of a mathematical sense, this is what happens with most drugs, that there's a benefit, but there's a, also a detriment to the drugs. And so um, if you look at this first curve, this is the pain relief provided by the drug with increasing dose. And so we might define a ED50 So that is the, the concentration of drug at which you get half maximal effect. A max benefit. OK. Um, but there's also a, a TD50, which might be around here. which would be the 50% uh, toxic dose. That means if you're taking this level of drug, you're getting half maximal um, of, of the toxic effects of, the, of that drug. And so then the, the benefit, the net benefit of these drugs is a combination between the, the pain relief and the toxicity. And so um, just for, for an ex as an example, I said that the, the, the net benefit would be E minus 2 times 2T. And so when you do that, then the net benefit looks like something like this, where at this point, you get the max net benefit. It gets shifted over um, from the, the effect of pain relief. And so um, basically, in your homework, um, we're going to be looking at how do you optimize around when we got multiple um, multiple factors such as this. OK, so that's a, um, a biological um, example of why we might need to optimize a dose to, to maximize the the net benefit, and let me just kind of say here is basically what we'd be doing is searching along this line and finding out where is the point where it goes up the most, um, and and at that point we would be call it call that our optimum. So, um, so now let's look at what optimization means a little bit more math mathematically.
Okay, so if we've got a function that looks like this, then um, these are our roots. Right, those are two roots. Um, and then we also have a max, maxima and minima. Let me draw this a little, a little differently, like this. Okay, we have maxima, which is right here. Where f prime of x equals zero. And, not just that, but f double prime of x is less than zero. Okay, and right here we have a minimum where f prime of x equals zero, but f double prime of x is, is greater than zero. So that's the difference between a minimum and a, and a maximum. And so op what optimization does is it finds the ma maxima and minima And it turns out these max and mins um, are roots of f prime of our function. Okay, and so because the the maximum and minimum are, are roots of f prime. It's going to be a relationship between the, the methods that we use for root finding and optimization. Okay, a couple of other terms that are important to, to, to note when, when we're dealing with optimization is let me just write out a, something that looks like this. And we say that this right here would be the global maximum. This right here would be the global minimum. And these are also these are also maxes and min, but they're local max. And this is a local min. And one of the things that we'll learn is that um, the optimization algorithms that we have generally can't guarantee that you can find the global max or min, but they'll, they'll converge on some sort of max or min that that might be a, a, a local max or a local min. Uh, finally, another concept is that so far, we've been talking about this on an open domain or open interval, but on a bounded interval, the endpoints are going to be automatically going to be A local max and min. So in this case, this will be a local max, and this would be a local min. On a bounded interval.
Okay, so that gives us a little bit of terminology about um, about optimization. And so now we're going to start looking at what methods we use for optimization. Uh, so the analogous to what we had done with root finding, there are bracketing methods, which start with two initial guesses. Um, and we'll call these XL and XU. And they only need to be able to evaluate our function. They don't need to be able to evaluate derivatives of our function. And so this is going to sound a lot like a bisection method. But in this case, we're finding a maxima. And this is called the golden section search method. And in contrast, some of the open methods that we'll talk about only need one initial guess. Um, but are going to require more information So the steepest ascent method is going to need to be able to take derivatives, and the Newton's method is going to need to be able to take second derivatives as, as well. So in a way, these more advanced methods get greedier and greedier in terms of how much information they need about your function, even though they have the advantage that they may um, may converge quite well. Okay, so in over, as an overview of um, the golden section search method, we'll draw out what happens in this method here. So you've got a f of x. And I'll draw out something like this. OK, so you start with a lower bound and an upper bound. And then you start with um, two interior points. We'll call those x1 and x2. OK, and so basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be comparing XL, X, f of x2 and f of x1. So f of x2 and f of x1 right here. Let me just draw dashed lines down here. OK, so basically what we're going to be doing is comparing the height of f of x1 and f of x2. And the question is, where do um, where do x1 and x2 come from? Because you need to know um, which, which points are being compared. And so the golden ratio is what determines the, the location of these interior points in this golden section rule. And so basically, um, that's given by uh, the golden ratio is 1.6180 uh, on, on going, and it's an irrational number. And we're going to subtract one from it so that we get about 61%. So basically, that means about, um, or XL um, let's see, X1 is about 61% of the way from XL to XU. And X2 is about 61% of the way 
from XU to XL. Okay, so that um, isn't too hard, um, but it might not be obvious why we would want to um, use these special numbers right here. And so basically, the golden ratio is a very special um, number in, in math and in art. So and in, especially in the Renaissance period, uh, people were fascinated by the um, by the, the relationships between these different geometries. And, and they found that apportioning um, their art objects according to the golden ratio were, were very appealing. And as you can see, if you look at the Mona Lisa right here, at the ratio, um, if you look at this box right here, this box is showing the property of the golden ratio, where from this point to this point is 61% of the way to the top of her head, for example. So her, her chin is 61% of the way to the top of her head. And um, we have very um, similar different um, patterns like the um, in this um, pointillism picture by Seurat, we see that the horizon is 61% of the way from the bottom of the painting to the top of the painting. And so we're gonna be using that similar ratio um, because it has, uh, it doesn't just look nice. Um, that's why the, um, one of the main reasons why it was used in the Renaissance paintings. Um, it's not just visually appealing, but it helps us do the math as well. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to, um, at the top are our uh, math equations that show how, how to calculate x1 um, based on the lower and the upper bound on some interval, um, multiplied by this uh, phi minus one, so that's where the golden ratio comes in. And this um, equation um, x2 for x2 shows us how to calculate x2 based on xu, xl, and the golden ratio. And so the basic idea, we're going to show two, two different examples. Um, the first is, on this first example on the left, we've got a, a, a function that's rising. And so let me change colors here. We have a function that's rising. So what we want to do is we want to evaluate um, f of x1 and f of x2. And we see that this one is higher. So that means that we're going to want to get rid, get rid of, or reject this section, and we're going to keep the um, the part of the function that's over here. And so when we do that, um, x2 becomes our new xl, uh, x1 becomes our new x2, xu just stays the same as xu, and we're going to need a new, um, we're going to need a, need a new x1 that gets calculated. So only one new value is going to be needed to calculate. OK. Oops. Okay, so then let's do the same process over here, is that um, if we're having a downward slope, um, then we'd see that f of x2 is greater than f of x1, right? And so we're going to um, say we want to, we like this one, we keep that as an interior point, and we're going to reject um, this lower uh, section right here. And so uh, xl stays as xl x2 becomes our new x1, x1 becomes our new xu, and we're going to calculate a new x2. So again, only one new value is needed. And so that's really the, the special property of the golden ratio, is that um, if it had been any other number, we would have had to calculate two interior points each time we did this. Uh, but because it's the golden ratio, um, the in this case, 
the um, the x2 ends up being exactly where it needs to be to be the x1 for the next iteration. Okay, um, so we basically in golden section search we're going to be repeating this process, well, you know, one after the other. So we gra gradually narrow in on um, on the maximum of the function. And so we need some way to stop. And so that is given by the golden section stopping criteria. And this is just a, a special formula um, that's similar to just approximate error, but, but by tradition, we use this version of it um, when, when we're using the golden section uh, search. And so basically what, what it involves is, is calculating the, the XU and the XL and the X opt, where X opt, that's our current optimum. So it's the X value that has a larger uh, function value on it right there. Okay, so that's how we stop. Basically, you'd, ha you'd have to set a tolerance, right? And then you stop where EA gold is less than the tolerance. Okay, so let's now just We've been doing this by um, graphically, and so now let's um, do this by words and kind of outline how the golden section search works. Is that we're going to first choose a lower XL and an upper XU that bracket a local maximum of f of x. Then we're going to compute interior points by this golden section. Uh, 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 equations. So we've got this, then we had an XL, XU, then we're going to compute a X1, and X2 um, based on these equations. And then if F of X1 is greater than X2, then the optimum is X1. Um, however, that's not true in this case. Um, in this case, f of x, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. So f of x1 would be up, up here. And so it's greater than f of, f of x2. And so then the new optimum it becomes at x of 1. Um, and then you do, do the, the, these uh, assignments as, as, you sh as you see written here that the, the optimum value is x1, um, x2 becomes our new xl, x1 becomes our new x2, and f of x1 becomes our new f of x2. And so you calculate the new x1 and then repeat the process. If, on the other hand, it went more like this, and we had um, f of x1 is less than f of x2, If x1 was less than x2, then you do a different assignment. You say that the optimum value becomes at x2, which, which is a good choice because it happens to be uh, quite high on the function. Um, and then you x2 becomes the new x1, x1 becomes the new xu, um, and then you calculate the new x2 and repeat the process. And then you repeat this process and not infinitely, but until you're, um, you're me meeting the golden section search uh, stopping criteria. OK, so that, that kind of just outlines the method. We're finally going to um, apply the method in a specific case. Um, but before I do that, um, I know you can't read this very easily, but you should be able to see it from the slides when you download the slides. 
Uh, this is a pseudocode that shows the basic structure of how you might think about coding up your own uh, version of the golden section search. OK, so, so finally, let's um, do an example of this. Um, we're going to start with um, this uh, function right here, uh, 2 sine minus x squared over 10 plus 4. And what we're going to do is we're going to first, um, we need to first calculate what x1 and x2 are. So x1, let's see, so for i equals 1, then x1 equals, and I'm using these equations that, that I have down here at the bottom. So x, f, xl, let's see. Right, so we're going to start with um, these red the dashed lines indicate our xl. and our xu, which are our upper and lower bounds. And so then we'll um, calculate um, f of x1, which is 0 plus 4 plus 0 times square root of 5 minus 1 over 2. That's the golden ratio. Um, it was 2.4. 7 to 1. Okay, so that's right here. And then x2 equals 4 minus 4 minus 0 times golden, golden ratio. Was 1.5279. That's about there. Okay. So let me fill that in this this table right here. 2.4. Seven two one and one point five two seven nine. Sorry, my um, pen takes a while to catch up sometimes. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is calculate the value of our function at those locations, and so it turns out that this is at four point six three. And this is at 5.765. Let me just point out that those are the x1 and x2 locations. So f of x1 was 4.63. of x2 was 5.7. Six five. Okay, and so now we want to compare these, and we see that uh, five point seven six five is much bigger than four point six three. So we are going to um, kind of reject this portion of our graph, and then here let me change colors to help you follow the rest of how this works. So now we're we're doing the reassignments. And so the way the reassignments work are that um, I hear is that XL is going to be um, the same. XU is going to come from the previous X1. So it's going to go from, from here to, to here. So it's going to be 2.475. Like this. Our x1 is coming from the previous x2. So it's 
So this right here is going to be coming our, our new x2. So 1.5. Seven, nine. And because that has the same, same value, we, we know that it also has um, the same f, 5.765. OK. And then finally, we don't know what this value is going to be at x, the new x2, so we need to calculate it. So i equals 2 given by x2. And so we've got our new uh, lower bound. Oh, sorry. For the, for the x2, we, we use the upper bound as the first term. So we've got x2 is 2.472 minus 2.472. Minus zero times this factor of the golden ratio equals zero point nine four four. Okay, so this is zero point nine four four. And then we can calculate. Oops. Sorry about that. Um, and then we can calculate the f value, which is 5.531. Okay. So what we've just done is we've we've stepped through two iterations of the golden section search, and hopefully, uh, based on that, that you can follow through more. OK, so um, in today's lecture, we've introduced the idea of optimization, where we go iter iteration by iteration to make an improvement towards a certain objective function. In this case, we're trying to maximize a certain um, function, that maximize the certain uh, function. And we've really focused today on the golden section search because it uh, finds maxima, and it um, has requirements that um, you must bracket the optimum um, with a lower and upper value, but it has a real benefit in that it is guaranteed to find a maximum if that exists. And finally, it has an advantage that no derivatives are needed. In the next lecture, we'll be looking at other methods um, that may converge more quickly. Um, the golden section search con converges kind of slowly. Um, these new methods will converge more quickly but have additional caveats to them, such as um, uh, sometimes they will not uh, converge the correct solution. And so it's, that's why it's useful to know multiple different methods and understand their strengths and weaknesses. Um, so with that, I hope that was helpful to you, and I will see you next time.